Okay, so welcome back. So far, we talked about Mars, Cotard, Random Forest. Now let's talk about stochastic gradient boosting, the technique known uh, in, uh, as our internal name is TreeNet, or officially marketed name. TreeNet was also known as multiple additive regression trees, MART. It's also known as stochastic gradient boosting. So now it is time to introduce that part and uh, see what's going on. So I'm going to switch back uh, to my slides. And uh, first, let me introduce the concept of a loss function just because it's, uh, it turns out to be a very uh, important part of the tree net algorithm. Okay, the loss function is defined as the amount of penalty incurred when the model predicts response surface H of X on the observed outcome Y. So again, to go back to the very beginning of uh, this uh, mini-series, uh, our goal is to construct the response surface H of X, which is the predicted response uh, that is somehow connected to the observed outcome y. Now there are many different ways of constructing loss functions. You can directly interpret h of x as an estimate of y and that brings you to the least squares loss, LAD loss, and Huberan loss. Or you can define h of x as a parameter of a known conditional distribution and then apply the likelihood principle. Now most notably you can introduce logistic loss if you consider that condition of y given x is Bernoulli, and then the h of x can be interpreted as half log odds of y equals 1. Or in the case of Poisson loss, you can uh, work with conditional Poisson. h of x is interpreted as log lambda of x, lambda being the rate of the Poisson uh, conditional loss. And also, some of the conventional losses, like least squares loss, can be introduced as under standard normality assumptions, whereas exponential loss could be introduced under uh, some of the condition exponential and so on and so forth. There are also some other more elaborate loss functions that we may talk about some other time. Now here is an example of classical regression loss functions. Least square is loss, simply the sum of squared differences between what you observe and what you predict averaged over observations. Now these are empirical losses because they go instead of looking at the overall expectation, we're looking at the empirical estimator of that expectation. LAD loss, the only difference is that instead of taking a square, we're taking the absolute value of the difference between what we observe and what we predict, averaged over uh, observations. And the Huber-M loss will be the hybrid between LS and LAD. What Huber-M does, it kind of uses at least squares in, uh, for small deviations, and then it automatically flips to uh, linear loss for large deviations, and this kind of has a nice uh, analytical properties that uh, you may consider here. Now, why is the loss important? Well, because this allows us to introduce yet another data-driven way to work with uh, building uh, customized, flexible, data-driven models. So, for example, suppose here I have this nonlinear univariate dependency. So this is y, this is x, and I have this kind of uh, parabola shape. Now what I can do, I can fit first the initial guess here, right, the overall y bar. So this will be my initial guess. And now I am interested in improving on my initial guess somehow. The way you do it, first you calculate the residuals. Uh, so all of these red little bars, those are residuals. And notice, in this part I have residuals that are positive, here and here. In this part in the middle, I have residuals that are negative. So now, if I can automatically find the best way to partition my data range into these regions where the residuals tend to be positive and the residuals tend to be negative, then I can take my original response and adjust it upwards in those areas where my residuals are positive, right? I adjust it upwards and adjust it downwards 
in those areas where my residuals tend to be negative. So once I've done this adjustment, uh, then there is also some measures taken in terms of uh, uh, not having a very large deviation, so there's a concept of learn rate, shrinkage, etc., etc. Again, I'm skipping all of the fine details here because they would have taken us another hour to talk about the fundamentals and the very solid statistical and probabilistic foundation of the TreeNet algorithm. But as far as the general highlights, you're basically saying, look, I start with the current response surface that is the overall initial guess. Then I'm looking at the structure of my residuals based on whatever loss function that I'm working with. Then I'm trying to make a, a stepwise adjustments of a very minor, tiny scale to my response surface such that the adjustments go in the direction favored by residuals. And then you do it many times over and over again, and that brings you to this stochastic gradient boosting algorithm. And again, no time to talk about it in great length. Let's just say that the inputs will be the loss function, the learn rate lambda, typically something like 0 0.1, 0 0.01, something that forces the process to be very small, sampling rate, and the tree size M, individual tree size, and the overall number of iterations. And once you have that, the first, you make the initial guess, which is a constant everywhere, and then it enters into this iterations loop, where at each point, at each iteration, it takes a random sample of a, s a fraction S from the learned data, then it calculates generalized residuals, which is uh, the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to prediction at individual observation, negative. Then it fits an M node regression tree to these generalized residuals. This partitions uh, data into mutually exclusive regions. And then within each of those M mutually exclusive regions, it does the modification to the response surface, which is subsequently shrunk by applying the learn rate. Uh, anyways, this is the tree nut algorithm, and let me quickly illustrate what it means as far as uh, running it in practice. So we've already seen the results of Mars, Carter, and Random Forest. Let me go back here and say, Okay, uh, let's switch to 3-net gradient boosting. I'm still working in regression mode here. And uh, in 3-net, just for the sake of illustration, I'll use 20% selected at random as the test sample. And uh, on the 3-net side, uh, we will use uh, mean square that the 3-net loss function will be Huber M. However, I can switch it to least squares. And the optimal criterion will be based on the mean squared error. So I'm going to build 200 trees. Each tree will have six nodes. And uh, I'll use sampling fraction at 50%. And uh, at each tree will be six nodes. And there's some other settings that will uh, take a default. OK, let's click Start. Uh, the resulting display here shows two curves. Uh, the mean squared error on the learned sample and mean squared error on the test sample. And uh, those two kind of converge nicely. And uh, when you click on the summary button, when uh, you look at uh, some of these performance, performance measures, then you can see my test performance uh, now up to 83%. And there's also some indication that the process keeps on learning because uh, I see there's a lot of uh, improvement that goes on and my optimal number of trees is still set to 200. So let me see if we can push it even further. Or when I go to tree net, uh, what we can do, we can adjust the learn rate, uh, the original learn rate automatically set to 0 0.001, which is probably too small for my specific needs. So I'm going uh, to go ahead and uh, increase it to 0.1 and then restart the process such that we can see what happens if we push it all the way. And now it's clear that my learned performance is better than, than my test performance. 
the optimal number of trees is 173, and the resulting R squared on the test partition is 87%. So again, I've recovered the same signal that I had before with the Mars runs and random forest runs, except that this time it's done by utilizing 173 six-node regression trees which is the nice thing about it and again you can click on the summary here you can look at things like variable importance same old players rml stat distance crime uh, you can look at uh, the residual box plots you can look at the overall summary the way we saw it and uh, more importantly now you also have access to tree nut plots so when you do tree nut runs you can create plots for any variable of interest and it's either one variable dependence or two variable dependence and for any tree or any model of interest and by default it has already created plots for this model that has 173 trees for all of the variables available in that model so when I click show all button uh, I can discard some of the 3D plots. Now you can see this is the tree net way, or stochastic gradient boosting way, to show the nature of contribution of each individual variable to the predicted response. And these plots are very similar to the insights that were found by Mars. So for example, in RM, the key uh, transition happens between six and seven and a half. The same thing happened in CART when CART tried to partition at six and a half and seven and a half. The LSTAT exhibits some kind of curvature. Uh, distance to employment centers exhibits this one to two mile important contribution and then it's uh, pretty much no difference and so on. But more importantly, look how TreeNet does its stochastic component. These are not pure nonlinear curves. These are essentially a superposition of a large number of tiny little steps because an individual regression tree is still a step function as it goes up or down. It's piecewise constant and the tree net by combining a large number of those and a very small learn rate kind of imitates the essence of that nonlinearity. In some cases people think that this uh, you don't really want to deal with that like that, so you can always open up an individual plot and uh, you can uh, basically uh, select some of these uh, not locations by hand and you can fit your own little uh, spline uh, solution such that when you move the points around it's uh, optimizing all of those locations and you can even uh, specify uh, certain approximations let's say automatically fill a four knot solution here or let's say here uh, let's automatically fit uh, a five knot solution to this spline as you can see you can nicely fit it or over here let's say let's try to fit uh, an inverse uh, model and uh, in this case it fits this kind of inverse function and for each of those you can actually see the uh, the actual form and the coefficients associated with those models so if you're interested in this spline solution you can see in either basic or SAS exactly the nature of this transformation uh, as you can see it's been uh, a pretty long journey uh, my voice is getting tired there's a lot to talk about a lot to present the the nicest thing about the tree nut models is that they're very fast and they're very efficient and compact even on uh, very large data sets and uh, so they give you speed and efficiency and they also give you very high predictive accuracy I mean it's being uh, shown time and again in a variety of different data mining competitions all kinds of different groups out there and uh, some of our clients uh, I mean there's a lot of information that we can share with you that highlight the real
power of Trina, that it works all the time, that it's great, that it is really capable of delivering the highest predictive accuracy. On the other hand, the Trinet also gives you a very powerful ways to uh, understand what's going on in your models. Now, the plots is the key here. So whenever you build a tree nut model, once you've identified the important predictors and all of that stuff, uh, after that, the very next thing you do, you look at the plots. You look at the plots, and we have these facilities with spline transformations and so on, where you can, by fitting a certain parametric transform, now you can export it or extract it and bring it back to the conventional regression problem and this way you can always uh, use 3 net to help you guide with the conventional analysis. Sometimes people ask how do I present 3 net model to someone who's never seen it. Well in many cases you don't have to. Once you use 3 net to extract variables and identify transformations now at that point you can just take those transformations and code them by hand. Well the code is already there you just need to run it outside of SPM and bring it back to the conventional regression you'll still get uh, at least a very good performing models and the transformations will be as if you found them by hand. So this brings our cycle to where I've started. I've started by introducing the linear regression problem as the classical ways and means to solve predictive modeling problem and then we also highlighted that the real difficulty and the real challenge it was the conventional regression is the search for transformations and then I showed you a number of different ways how modern data mining allows you to identify those transformations for you so that you don't have to worry about doing all of that by trial and error. So you run Mars, you run CART, you run TreeNet, you identify important variables automatically. You identify important transformations automatically. Once you have all of those transformations reported to you, shown to you right into your face, now you can take them and go back to conventional modeling and make everyone happy. I love statistics, I love probability, I love conventional modeling, but I really, at the current stage of my consulting work and development, I can't live without tools like Mars and TreeNet because I know how much extra power they bring into my work, how much bias removing capabilities they have. In minutes, in seconds, I can achieve something that would have taken me weeks month of work so my efficiency goes tremendously up and I'm not looking for something that it's not there I'm only looking for something that the tool has already identified and that is the ultimate most important uh, dramatic improvement that you as statisticians as some practitioners of probability and statistical science out there in the field can gain from looking at the data mining tools. So the next time you think data mining, don't just assume that this is some kind of weird, uh, strange set of techniques that uh, computer science folks decided to implement to, to, to study gigantic databases of some transactions. No, there's a very powerful foundational of statistics behind techniques like CART, Mars, TreeNet, Random Forest. And if you take those, add them to your arsenal of tools uh, added to your kind of uh, power guns to chase after those difficult to sometimes difficult to identify signals then you will gain enormously in your work and in your career and this is essentially all that I wanted to share with you during this series and again you can find a lot more information on the videos dedicated to individual products and also uh, you can you're always welcome to attend our regular training classes thank you so much and I wish you all the best